Ethiopian to English news edition coming to you from Kanal Ajiyat Ethiopia. At the invitation of his Egyptian counterpart, the President of the Republic of Majitabun in Egypt to take part in the Climate Change Conference. The President of the Republic receives the Nigerian Foreign Minister and the Niger's Minister of Technical Education and Vocational Training. Good news for our pupils, 5 million of them will freely receive digital school books in a week, according to the Education Ministry. Protests and strikes keep marking the daily life of the Moroccans to denounce the harsh living conditions and condemn normalization. Good evening, those were today's top stories. First in our news, the President of the Republic, Abdel Majid Tabun, arrived to Sharm el-Sheikh in order to attend the summit of heads of state and government of the 27th COP, a UN framework convention on climate change, at the invitation of his brother, Abdel Fattah Assisi, President of the Arab Republic of Egypt. At the invitation of his brother Abdel Fattah Sisi, President of Egypt, the President of the Republic, left Algiers to Sharm el Sheikh on Sunday morning in, in order to participate in the summit of heads of state and government of the 27th Conference of the Parties, a UN framework convention on climate change. The President of the Republic was seen off at the Huari Boumdin International Airport by the Prime Minister Ayman bin Abdurrahman and the Army General Chief of Staff of the National People's Army, Sage Ngreha, as well as the principal private secretary of the presidency, Abdelaziz Khalaf. The President of the Republic was escorted when taken off from Huari Bundin International Airport by a squadron fighter jets belonging to the Algerian Air Forces. In a related topic, the Sharm el Sheikh Climate Change Conference will witness the participation of no less 120 heads of state and government. The participants will try to provide solutions to global warming, a serious threat for food and water security. More details with Midi Sakabash. 
The main goal, maintaining global warming below 2 degrees, which can be possible if the decisions taken during the last meetings were implemented, notably by the industrial countries. In Sharm el-Sheikh, the situation differs, since the first global report of the year 2023 will be established and will assess the commitments taken during Paris's conference. The United Nations' conference, COP27, will witness the participation of no less than 200 countries and will be held in a geopolitical context marked by conflicts, namely that of Ukraine and Russia, as well as energy crisis. Today, climate change became an essential issue, according to Antonio Guterres, UN's Secretary General. This meeting must establish groundwork for a fast climate action. We must recall the previous unfulfilled commitments by signatory states in view of the policies carried until now that are against the agreement signed. The Glasgow Accord of 2021 recommendations must be taken into consideration as well. In 2016, Algeria approved Paris Accord related to climate, and a national plan has been adopted concerning climate 2020-2030. With an aim to reduce 7% of greenhouse gas emissions, a rate that might reach 22% in 2030, if Algeria benefits from the necessary financial aid for major projects that will adapt to climate change. Once again, Algeria confirmed its commitment to support the global effort through its renewable energies program, considered as an immense factor in the production of electricity through the photovoltaic sector. The Algerian state also displayed its ambitions to produce green hydrogen with competitive prices, knowing that several partnerships have already been signed. Other initiatives have also been launched, notably the Green Belt and the plantation of 70 million trees by 2025. More than 120 heads of state and government will meet on Monday and Tuesday in Egypt so as to agree on solutions and establish policies that will reduce global warming. The financial promise made for southern countries is also awaited concerning the reduction of their emissions. In this matter, the Intergovernmental Group of Experts of Climate Evolution underlined in a report published about a year ago that Africa is the most vulnerable continent to the climate change effects. Several states, non-governmental organizations, as well as observers, hope that this summit, held in an African country, will see the main demands of African states and that of civil societies. In another activity, the President of the Republic received the Nigerian Minister of Foreign Affairs, Jeffrey Onyama, at the Huwari Bumdin International Airport's VIP lounge. The audience took place in the presence of the Minister of Foreign Affairs and National Communities at the Brother Ramdan Amamra, as well as the Principal Private Secretary of the Presidency, Abdelaziz Khalaf. On the occasion, the Nigerian Foreign Minister made the following statement. I was received by the President of the Republic and it was a great honor. I transmitted the greetings of the President Mohamed Buhari to his brother and I also gave him a report of the discussion that I had yesterday with my brother and counterpart, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Algeria, Ramtan Amamra. We have focused on the links between these two countries, Algeria and Nigeria, that are very close and on the domains in which we are cooperating in order to reinforce them, especially on the economic level. Yesterday, we inaugurated a business council to encourage our economic sectors to cooperate and put much more emphasis on these economic ties. On the political level, there is a very good cooperation as always in Africa. We are cooperating with Algeria and also the African Union and globally at the level of the United Nations too. There is this strong cooperation between our two countries and projects that will bring them even closer, such as the gas pipelines, there is also the road and also the optical fiber. These infrastructures are very important elements to reinforce the links between the two countries. Also, it was stressed on that Algeria and Nigeria must continue being the pillars of Africa and its development. It was an excellent discussion and we hope that very soon within the framework of the Binational Commission Algeria-Nigeria that the Algerian president will soon come to Nigeria. The President of the Republic also received on Sunday the Nigerian Minister of Technical Education and Vocational Training Qasum Maman Mukhtar. The audience took place in the presence of the Minister of Foreign Affairs and National Community of Brother Amdala Mamara and the Principal Private Secretary of the Presidency, Abdelaziz Khalaf, as well as the advisor to the Nigerian Presidency, Ragani Abdullah. Let us now listen to the Niger's Minister of Technical Education and Vocational Training. 
Je suis euh, porteur euh, d'un message. I carry the message of the President of the Republic, Mohamed Bazoum, to the President of the Democratic and People's Republic of Algeria, the high executive of the summit, about the industrialization of Africa that Niger will hold in Niamey on November 25th. I also transmitted the message of the fraternal greetings and the wishes of the President of the Republic, Mohamed Bazoum, to his brother, the President of the Republic, Abdel Majid Tabun. The President asked me to transmit his recognition and that of the Nigerian people and the excellent relations that have marked cooperation between Algeria and Niger since 1964. In another activity, the energy minister revealed that Algeria's hydrocarbons revenues should reach 5 billion U.S. dollars by the end of the current year. Mohamed Arqab was heard on Sunday by the Finance and Budget Committee at the National People's Assembly, during which the provisions of the 2023 finance law were discussed. This Sunday marked the end of the full break and the resumption of classes, and the first class commemorated the 68th anniversary of the Glorious Revolution of November 1st at the Mahmoud Turkey Primary School here in Algiers. The Minister of Education, Abdel Hakim Belabed, attended this commemorating class, after which he announced that more than 5 million pupils of primary schools will benefit from the digital school book for free, and that before the end of the current week. He also announced that more than 3 million pupils will benefit from measures to reduce the weight of school bags approved previously by the President of the Republic. Abroad, the situation is still tense in Morocco with further demonstrations and protest movements denouncing the precarious living conditions and inflation despite the repressive policy of the Mahzan regime. Ines Kilou tells us more situation in constant deterioration that has lasted for months and the Mahzen still in a desperate situation within context marked by inflation that does not stop growing. An ongoing hike of prices increasing by 1% each month, a rise in energy prices and a drop in economic growth. In September, the general rise in prices reached 8.3%. According to the High Commission for Planning, this increase is the outcome of a rise food index of 14.7% and that of non-food products of 5%. The highest increase in prices of non-food products was recorded at the level of transportation, which rose by almost 13%. A country jolted by an unprecedented social crisis with demonstrations that follow one another for months, which emanate from all social segments. Poverty continues to take an alarming proportion. The social situation is on the verge of explosion, where the inflation rate is experiencing a significant drop. Moroccans denounce a miserable quality of life, pushing an overwhelming majority of population towards the most alarming precariousness. Faced with the austere policy of the Mahzen, all the cities of the country are the scene of protest movements against the soaring prices that pose a real threat likely to undermine the daily life of Moroccans. To sports now, the big game between Muludia of Algiers and GS Kabylie ended with one goal to nil for MCA. The sole goal was scored by Tayyib Hamoudi. Let us pay a visit now to the Kasbah of Algiers, a highly symbolic place since it was a stronghold of resistance since the early hours of the Algerian Revolution. Its unique architecture helped the war veterans to hide and foil all the colonial plans and plots. Let's discover more with Ines Kilo. Whether it's strolling through the ancient ruins of Kasbah, now a UNESCO World Heritage Site, or venturing outside the area and its twisting alleys that carry plenty of historic memories from the colonial time, there is a story in every corner of this place of history and memory. This place contributed a lot in the fight against colonialism. It remains, let's say, as a symbol of resistance to the French. 
These houses were real hideouts and refuges for the Mujahideen at that time. Here at the Devil Street, or Aqbat Shaitan, fell as martyr Abdurrahman Arbaji. On February 3, 1957, a military official of the first military region of the autonomous zone of Algiers. <laughs> He tried to escape through the roof but was shot in the foot. By unfortunately, he couldn't jump. One of the secrets of the Battle of Algiers was to never close the doors because this place was a hiding place for the marchers. At that time, an elaborate for the colonizer. The houses in the Kasbah are linked to each other by secret tunnels and wells, so it's very difficult to find someone who's hiding inside. The authenticity of its architecture and its many sites and exits made the Kasbah a true urban place and a symbolic neighborhood of the Algerian Revolution. To culture now and to this concert at the Opera of Algiers dedicated to the 68th anniversary of the outbreak of the Liberation Revolution. Najah Tayyar tells us more. A show with a perfect fusion between universal music and the Algerian classic one. The show associated the three arts of the opera, namely the symphony orchestra, the Andalusian orchestra, and that of the polyphonic choir. Uh, On the occasion of the celebration of the 68th anniversary of the outbreak of the Algerian Revolution, we sang the independence of Algeria through the songs with evocative lyrics. There was a large crowd during this show. We want to organize similar musical shows in other provinces. The musicians have revived the most famous songs of Shabi and Andalusian and Universal Music, a beautiful mix that was much appreciated. The show reminds us of the history of Algeria. This is moving and even gave goosebumps. During this show, the symphonic orchestra, the musicians and the singers revisited famous pieces drawn from the rich universal repertoire and the Algerian music. The culture reflects the traditions and the costumes of citizens and their history. It is the reason why the show was dedicated to the celebration of the 68th anniversary of the revolution. In an atmosphere of communion, the evening was closed with Alhamdulillah Mabqash Istamar Fi Biladna, an emblematic song of Hajj Muhammad Al Anqa, dedicated to the independence of Algeria. And with that, our today's news edition comes to a close. Thank you for tuning in and goodbye.